In this video, I'm first going to analyse what a modern day centre back is and why I think Willy Cambuala showcased all of these traits in his debut against Liverpool, before coming on to why I think Ten Hag should have played him earlier, and also why I think United have a golden generation on their books. So what is a modern day centre back? Well essentially it's a centre back that allows you to play with tactical versatility, being just as good as pushing high up the pitch in the middle third as they are in the defensive third whilst also being a good progressor of the ball in possession as well. And Cambuala displayed a lot of the attributes necessary to fulfil that sort of centre back role that United need in the game against Liverpool. Now at the start of the game he did make a tactical error when a long ball got played down the line looking for Nunes and despite coming across to track the run well, Cambuala off balance shafted the clearance in behind. However this defensive mistake actually allowed him to showcase something that is crucial for a modern day centre back, pace, tackling and overall recovery ability as he raced back against Nunes who at one point had a 4 or 5 yard lead, realising that in order to make the tackle he had to get back across Nunes which he did perfectly, showcasing his pace and then his slide tackling ability to put in an inch perfect challenge inside of the box. But it wasn't just this incident that impressed me, I thought throughout the game we saw how dominant Cambuala can be in physical duels, being able to hold his ground well against a very physically aggressive and quick forward in Darwin Nunes, getting his body across players and utilising his strength to win the ball, and it wasn't just these physical attributes that I was so impressed by. But before I come on to that, if you're a fan of retro jerseys, head over to Retro Jersey Hub. They've got all the Manchester United retro jerseys from the 90s and 2000s, as well as retro jerseys from other club and international sides as well. They've also got the new season jerseys and you can customise each jersey as well if you want a particular player and number on the back. A link will be in the description below and I'll come back to some of my favourite jerseys on the site later on in the video. So what were the other attributes that Cambuala displayed against Liverpool that was so impressive? Well it was his reading of the game and positioning with him making an excellent front foot tackle on Luis Diaz as United's midfield as usual was stretched far too wide, opening up the passing lane into Diaz in the half space but Cambuala was there to stay step up and win the ball back and I'll come on to how this alongside his duel against Nunes in the channel can massively benefit United from a tactical point of view in just a bit. But also there was a crossing situation in the second half where Cambuala didn't do what most young centre backs would do in that situation. When the ball is in a crossing position close to the byline which is dropped back towards the goal instinctively, instead he recognised that United had already cut off the pass across goal and so he held his position, being close enough so that if the ball did get cut back towards a penalty spot, he was in a position to make an interception or block. Alongside this we saw him win a few aerial duels and stand up the likes of Nunes and Diaz in 1v1s, not diving in as Casemiro seems to do about 5 times a game, but showing game intelligence beyond his years, which alongside his positioning and reading of the game, to me at least showed that Cambuala can genuinely be an elite level centre back and he isn't solely relying on his physicality and his athleticism, but also on the ball I thought in the defensive and middle thirds, his composure in possession, alongside his progressive passing ability, to either play a long pass from a deeper position under pressure, into the forward line, or break the lines of the Liverpool system with progressive passes into Dalla when he inverted in field. Overall, despite the praise that he received, I actually think his performance is going under the radar, because of how good Maynou and Garnacho were and have been. My theory is that people will look at Cambuala and downplay his performance and potential, because with Garnacho and Maynou already showing they have the potential to be world class, many don't want to throw Cambuala into that bracket as well, thinking that United can't possibly have three academy graduates who are all still teenagers and can all reach the same sort of level that Saliba is as a centre back for Arsenal, Camavinga is as a midfielder for Real Madrid and Foden is as a creative wide player for City. But United do have these players, and the credit doesn't lie at Ten Hag's door, it should be given to the likes of Nick Cox and those in charge of overseeing the youth development system in the past few years, because that is a true reason as to why United have a golden generation of youth prospects. And that's despite the poor handling of players like Alvaro Fernandez, James Garner, Dan Gore and Maxi Oyadeli. But I'm going to come on to that more after I analyse the impact that Cambuala can have on the United system from a tactical point of view. So having Cambuala in the back line would allow United to push the back line higher up the pitch and go man for man at the back. By leaving three defenders against the opposition's front three on the halfway line, you are now able to push another defender forward from a deeper position to join the press, such as Dalor pushing up the right flank giving United the ability to go man for man, not just at the back but also in the opposition's half as well, which if the positioning of the defensive shape is correct, should allow United to be more vertically compact, giving the opposition 
position practically zero free passing options in build up, with only the keeper being left free. With Kambuala's pace, physicality, and defending in the channels, this means that even if the opposition do look to go long from the lack of options in the build up phase, Kambuala the majority of the time should be able to deal with the 1v1 battle in the channel. There's also, of course, as this predominantly relies on the head coach's build up system and strategy. So the fact that for the whole season I've been told the reason we have an utterly horrific defensive setup, which can be seen by the fact that we have the 16th highest XG against in the Premier League, as well as a negative goal difference and it's April, as well as a negative XG difference and a negative per 90 XG difference, is simply because Ten Hag doesn't have the centre backs to play a high line. And that's why there's so much space in the midfield for the opposition to cut through like butter, and Willy Kambuala was sitting on the bench the whole time is genuinely comedic. If only we had a centre back that wasn't terribly slow, who could play alongside Rafa Varane, then magically our problems would be solved, because Ten Hag could play a high defensive line, and that would make our defensive shape as good as the likes of Tottenham and Villas, which it wouldn't by the way, because the issue is also higher up the pitch with the wide midfielders often being too wide, and with Maynu and Bruno Fernandes being told to man-to-man -to -man press aggressively, despite the defensive line dropping off behind them, completely leaves Casemiro isolated in the centre. And this is a Casemiro who literally doesn't seem to be able to run anymore. It's not an injury, the guy is just finished at the top level. The same thing happened to Rooney at the end of his career. Casemiro was bloody walking against Chelsea after about the 20th minute. But if only Ten Hag had a fast centre-back who could play in the high back line, those issues further up in the press would also disappear. But all the whole bloody time he did have the centre-back in Willy Cambuala, he just preferred to play Johnny Evans and Victor Lindelof over him. And this is exactly what I meant when I said it's a complete myth that Ten Hag is a good developer of young players. Even Mourinho would have been forced to play Garnacho and Maynou because of how good they are already and how Rashford Anthony and Casemiro have been playing this season. What developing young players is actually about is taking short-term risks by playing players who are inexperienced for mid to long-term gain. Maynou forced Ten Hag's hands because of literally how he came into the team and looked levels above Casemiro instantly, Garnacho the same with Rashford and Anthony as well. Ten Hag should have put Kambuala in months ago. He's come into a game against Liverpool Liverpool in a dreadful Manchester United side and not only had arguably a man of the match game but also showcased that he has all the attributes to be an elite level modern day centre back if he is developed right. But before I go any further let me show you some of my favourite jerseys from Retro Jersey Hub. First of all we've got this Manchester United blue away shirt from 1988 to 1990. They've also got this famous Nigeria shirt made by Nike in 1996. And the third one would have to be this Brazil shirt from the 2002 World Cup, where Ronaldo Nazario was a player of the tournament, scoring two goals in the final. If you want to check out all of Retro Jersey Hub's retro and new season jerseys, a link will be left in the description below. I think people massively underrate how good a lot of United's academy players are. And despite the absolute shambles that United have been post Sir Alex Ferguson, the youth team since 2016 after they rejigged the system and brought in the likes of Nicky Butt and then Nick Cox has actually been very good, maybe even outstanding. And this can be seen not only by players like Greenwood, Maynou and Garnacho, but also by the fact that the Manchester United under 18s sit 10 points clear at the top of the under 18s Premier League, having played 20 games, won 17, drawn 2, and only lost 1. And United absolutely have to take advantage of this if by 2027, 2028 time, we don't have at least six or seven of this current crop as valuable first team players, then I think we failed in terms of youth to first team development, just as PSG and Chelsea have done by selling players without really giving them a proper chance in the first team. I think Willy Cambuala is good enough at the moment to be a starting centre back for United and next season be a backup centre back, whilst also being able to come in and play at full back as well. And I actually think him playing as a full back would benefit the development of his overall game as a centre back, and I'll explain just why I think this is the case in just a bit. But what other United youth prospects do I think should be in the first team next season and get in significant minutes? Well, Maxi Oyadeli is one who absolutely has to be in the squad next season, and I actually think that Ten Hag has to call him up right now in place of Casemiro, because I genuinely don't see how Oyadeli can be worse than Casemiro at the moment. The guy can't stop attacks through the centre of the pitch. Getting bypassed far too easily is almost becoming comical, and literally running at half the speed of opposition players. Even if Maxi Oyadeli's game isn't perfectly refined, 
mind, he at least has the athleticism that United need. And in possession, I think Casemiro has been incredibly poor as well. Maxi Oyadeli alongside Mainu behind Bruno Fernandes for me at the moment is a no-brainer. And for the remainder of the Premier League games, it would give us a chance to see if Oyadeli is actually as good as he looks when he's actually in the first team. Dangor as well is another one who I want to see in the squad next year, unless he gets a really good loan. Maybe somewhere like Middlesbrough under Carrick or Ipswich under McKenna, if they don't get promoted that is. But I think maybe even going somewhere like the German second division, where he's going to be guaranteed game time, may then set him up perfectly to come into United's first team in 2025, or at least be sold for a decent fee. But preferably, he alongside Oyadeli, I'd have in the squad next season. It would also save United money in the transfer window, having two central midfielders who can come into the squad and add squad depth. And if you want to understand how a midfield of Mainu, Oyadeli and Gore would work tactically, I do have a video on that, I'll leave it linked in the description. Alvaro Fernandez, if he doesn't end up at Benfica next season, has to be in the squad. He should be in the squad now instead of out on loan, considering we don't even have a fit left back. Surely this is the perfect time to bring through a 20, 21 year old fullback, an absolutely shocking decision. And I have got a video out on him which I did make a while back as well. But the next generation underneath Oyadeli, Gore and Fernandez is just as good if not even better. Shea Lacey, if he develops physically, could be United's answer to Phil Foden, although I think he's a few years away from being a significant first-team player, given that he's only turning 17 this month, and in a separate video I am going to be talking about how United can use a club network to bridge the gap between the youth teams and the first team. Jack Fletcher is another one, son of Darren Fletcher, although a very different midfielder to his dad, being stylistically similar to an Ozil or a Mata, in the sense that he isn't as athletic or powerful as his dad, but a lot more creative, playing as a number 10 rather than a box-to-box -box central midfielder. Amir Ibrahimov is another creative playmaker who at the moment is still too young to be realistically thrown into the first team squad, but does have massive potential. This also goes for Fletcher, Shea Lacey, and also Harry Amas, who I did a whole analysis video on a few weeks ago, and like the others I'll leave that linked in the description. Now Camboala, Mainu and Garnacho have pretty much cemented themselves as players who I think can be key for United next season, with Gore, Oyadeli and Fernandez if he stays, also being players who I think need to feature in the first team. However, United need to improve their development path for the youth team, utilising the loan system a lot better and not allowing players to stagnate in the under-21s, as has happened with far too many players. And I'm currently covering this on my Patreon, going over my early ideas of not just how United United can utilise a club network effectively, both in terms of developing young players and promoting their brand further, but also where I see the future of the club network system in football going as well. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can go over and check out the first episode of my Patreon podcast, which should be out later today, as well as access to around 20 unreleased videos that I've put out this year. You can get a seven day free trial as well, a link will be in the description below. 